Hello and welcome to episode number 294 of Out There, and we are definitely not your evening news. It'll be a great show coming up tonight. Alan Watt joins us from a secret location somewhere in Ontario, Canada. Alan is an expert on the matrix world we're living in. Should be a great show. Very knowledgeable man. Listen, before we get to the news tonight, uh, we're asking you to visit our website to view a couple of incredible video clips. First, you've got to take a look at the two new MTV commercials warning young viewers to wake up and start thinking about the direction our society is heading. This is on MTV. The new music videos are telling kids to pay attention to what's happening, making it very clear to them that the U.S. could soon become a police state under martial law. Then check out the CNN interview with economist John Williams, who states that in two years, a U.S. $100 bill will be worth about the same as a roll of toilet paper. Williams says says that the combination of record home foreclosures and dozens of bank closings will lead to a complete elimination of the dollar as we know it. These stories and many more on the breaking news page at OutThereTV.com. And our website, by the way, is looking incredible these days, mm -hmm. so please check it out. Few realize it, but every minute of the day, federal agents are watching the financial transactions of millions of Americans without their knowledge. Federal agents admitted last week they're now spying on regular citizens, some who have as little as fifty dollars in their bank accounts they couldn't care less how much you have what they're looking for is where your money's coming from or to whom you're writing checks to it's the same type of financial spying that nailed new york governor elliot spitzer in the government's attempt to find traces of money laundering check fraud or any crime implicating deposits or withdrawals that could be linked to terrorism barry steinhardt of the aclu says people have no idea how much american freedoms are eroding or just how pervasive Big Brother really is. Neither do Americans realize their most private financial transactions are being routinely examined and reported on to Homeland Security. The number of suspicious financial activity reports on American citizens has soared from 400,000 back in 2003 to 2 million just last year. John Coleman, who founded the Weather Channel back in 1982, says he wants to sue former Vice President Al Gore for fraud, hoping a legal forum will settle the global warming debate once and for all. Coleman says as you look at the atmosphere over the last 25 years, there's been perhaps one degree of warming, but there's been many more degrees of global cooling. And he's right. In just the last couple of years, record high snow levels and cold temperatures are setting new records everywhere in the U.S. West, Canada, China, and Australia. Coleman says the cooling of the planet is so significant, if we continue the trend another year, the general public will at last begin to realize they've been scammed on the entire global warming issue. Coleman spoke to Fox News after his recent appearance last week at the Conference on Climate Change in New York, where he blasted the Weather Channel's decision to focus on traffic and lifestyle reports over the weather. Coleman says he's thinking seriously about suing Al Gore for fraud and putting a stop to this global warming nonsense once and for all. Boy, this the next story will be of great concern to our thousands of Canadian viewers. This past February 14th, Canada and the U.S. signed an agreement which allows for the covert deployment of U.S. troops inside Canada. There was no official announcement. In fact, the agreement was barely mentioned by either the U.S. or Canadian media. It's also been learned that in response to the 9-11 attacks, the Canadian government secretly reached an agreement with Homeland Security entitled the Canada-U.S smart border declaration shrouded in secrecy this agreement hands over to homeland security and the u.s government confidential information on all canadian citizens it also provides u.s authorities with complete access to the banking tax and health records of millions of canadians without their knowledge ultimately what is at stake here is that canada could cease to function as a nation by the end of 2012 its borders controlled by the u.s amazing u.s troops will also be permitted to operate in the open in Canada as a result of a binational arrangement allowing Canadian citizens to be arrested by U.S. officials. Last week there were dozens of news stories about the record number of Canadi Americans moving to Canada to escape surveillance, the Patriot Act, and the encroaching Big Brother society here in the U.S. So unless Canadians move quickly to prevent the U.S. from taking control of their country, well, it soon won't matter which nation you move to.
You see them at the supermarket aggressively pushing their shopping carts around, and you get this feeling that if you didn't move fast enough, they might just run into you. There's an undercurrent of suppressed rage, hostility, and detachment, as if they're on some other planet. You see the same thing driving down the road, one hand on the wheel, the other hand holding up a cell phone, charging through traffic just as aggressively as the people in the supermarket pushing around their shopping cart. Sadly, people don't seem to smile much anymore, angry at someone or something. No one wants to talk about anything that matters. And if you do want to discuss anything other than sports, sex, or dancing with the stars, no one seems even remotely interested. The bigger concern is people never used to be like this, even our leaders. Now they're hostile, impatient, abrupt, suspicious, even threatening. Neither does anyone want to complain about anything, whether it's the wiretapping of your phone, the 8 million surveillance cameras in the country, or corrupt government officials. They just look at you and roll their eyes like you're Mel Gibson's crazy character in conspiracy theory if you dare to express your dissatisfaction with the status quo. And God forbid, don't mention 9-11 or conspiracy theories relating to it or the real reason for the Iraq war, because those topics really get people uncomfortable. Sadly, like the Germans who were a Afraid to speak out, we've now become a nation of sheep, dumbed down, unable to think, waiting to be told what to do. Big thanks to Leon Fisher at the National Expositor for that story. You can read more at nationalexpositor.com. Time for our first commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk about the disease, well, it's not a disease at all, ADHD and how young people are actually dying from the treatment. A recent suicide involving a 15-year-old British boy could now be linked to an increase in his Ritalin prescription. Anthony Cole, who was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, had been taking Ritalin for six years. But suddenly the boy began acting differently around his family shortly after his dosage was increased. In fact, a few days before his death, the boy asked his mother how to write a will and even inquired about life insurance. Well, then the unthinkable. Last week his father found him hanging in his room. Anthony's death has brought to the forefront the fact that 25 million British and American kids are being prescribed Ritalin, an em 